I'm Larry Singley and welcome to Diversity's Two Minute Drill. Today's topic is common mistakes when stripping floors. A couple of things right off the bat, ladies and gentlemen, safety. This can be a very uh, dangerous, potentially dangerous task to do. It's very alkalinic, very hot, can cause burns when we mix uh, stripper. You need to have gloves. Secondly, you need to have eyewear, whether these are goggles or whether they are glasses as I'm wearing here, you must, those are must to protect you. To protect yourself and others, we want some caution tape as well, and you want your wet floor signs. When floor stripper starts mixing with the substrate itself and the floor finish, it creates a very slick, slippery surface that can potentially be dangerous. Preparedness. You need to have all of your chemical, all of your equipment, and all of your tools gathered in one spot to make it more effective and more efficient. The second thing we'd like to stress with you is substrates. Know the substrate that you are stripping. Rubber and linoleum traditionally do not accept high alkaline strippers very well. In fact, you can damage if not destroy it. In that case, you want to use a special stripper. In Diversity's case, it would be a product by the name of LinoSafe. So be very cognizant of the substrate you're working on. There are four critical factors that must be adhered to in order for this process to work, again, effectively and efficiently. Number one, you have to know what type of stripper you're using for what type of job. Again, is it a floor sensitive, substrate sensitive floor? Are we using, are we trying to remove zero to five coats, five to 10, 10 to 20? What is the situation for the stripper? Number two, the dilution ratio. This is an absolute must, ladies and gentlemen. You have to be spot on with the dilution ratio. And unless you have an automatic system, such as Diversity's RTD, that mixes it automatically for you, you do need a mixing cup to be able to mix according to the label directions. Thirdly, you have to have enough on the floor to float a toothpick. You have to flood the floor. And the fourth thing, which is again an absolute must, is it has to dwell, it has to do its job. Traditionally, that's somewhere in between the 10 to 15 time frame, leaning probably closer to the 15. So be cognizant of that. We hope these tips will help you in your next stripping job. We thank you for your time. If you have any other further questions, please contact your local sales rep from Diversity or our technical customer support. Thank you.